Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop and welcome to part three of my video series on how I'm making this walnut coffee table. In part two, I showed how I joined the shelf to the legs with a twin tenon. I added the vertical dividers, I added the curves, and I pre-finished the parts. In this video, I'm going to show you how I assembled the whole piece and then I will make the top and also make the two drawers for both sides. So let's get started. For the glue up, I'm using epoxy. I'm also adding a little bit of filler just to make it a little thicker and make it easier to work with. I couldn't find a brush, so I'm using a stick here. But that didn't work as well as I had hoped. The brush would have worked a lot better. I decided to use epoxy for this glue up, mainly because of the open time. If I had used regular wood glue, I would not have been able to get this thing together before the glue set. Uh, this whole sequence actually took a half hour, or a little over that, so it was a very long glue up. There's a certain order that the table needs to be assembled in. First, the vertical dividers need to be attached to the shelf, and then the legs need to be attached to that shelf as well, and then the subtop can be attached to the vertical dividers and the legs. Now, when I went to add the subtop, I realized that I had forgotten to drill the holes for the screws that will attach the top to the subtop, so I quickly did that and then got back to gluing up. I actually ran out of glue, so I had to mix up another batch of epoxy, and I kept on applying glue. There's a lot of places to put glue on this project. <laughs> now I don't show it in the video, but I did apply some clamps to this. I clamped across the tenons for the breadboards and then I also clamped, also clamped down over the dividers just to make sure those were fully seated. But all in all, the glue up went really smoothly and came out just great. So the next thing I have to do is make my top. I'm using a set of dividers to scrap around the table to give me my offset. I wanted about an inch and a half uh, overhang on all sides. So I use the scribes just to give me a line of where I need to cut the piece. Now the corners were a little weird since the legs are there. So I used my template for my curve just to kind of finish out the curves to the corners. I do that for both the long curve and the small curve. It doesn't really have to be super precise, I'm just looking to make something that looks like it was meant to be that way. Now the next thing I can do is cut out those curves. The end cuts were a little awkward since the panel was so wide. A jigsaw would have been a lot easier to use than the bandsaw. And then I'll flush up to the line. I used a hand plane to do that. I first flushed the end grain and then I flushed the long grain on the sides. Just to give a nice sweeping curve. I didn't want any flat spots or any kind of weirdness to the curve. This actually went pretty quickly and it was a lot of fun. I love being able to incorporate hand planes more into my work. Now after I sanded the top I found that it was a little, it wasn't that great looking. It was very muddy and cloudy and not very clear. So I went over the whole piece with a card scraper. And that really brought out the grain and just added so much more clarity to the piece. You can kind of see where I scraped where it's kind of brighter. I noticed the card scraper was a little dull so I went off camera there and I sharpened it. And came back and I scraped across the entire top. Now I can start finishing the top. After I wiped it down with some mineral spirits to get rid of all the dust, I went ahead and I started applying my first coat of finish. Next I can begin working on the drawers. I milled the stock for the drawer front. This is a little bit of a thicker piece. I think it was six quarter. So once they get that milled up and I get the drawer fronts cut to size, I can start working on the dovetails for my drawer sides. I'm doing that at the bandsaw with just a simple wedge. This makes it really easy and it gives you a very symmetrical pattern to your dovetails. 
because you're flipping them from side to side. And then for the second cut, I want some thin pins, so I line up the blades to go into the kerf of the other cut, just making sure that I have enough space there so I don't nick the corner of the adjacent tail. And while I'm at the bandsaw, I'll just cut off the little ends to save me some time at the bench. Now at the bench, I can begin chopping to remove the waste. After I've chopped out most of the waste, staying away from the line, I'll come back with a wider chisel and just make my knife line a little bit deeper. That just makes it really easy to register these thinner chisels into that knife line without them skewing. And then I can clean up the inside corners of the dovetails. I do that with this little thin chisel. Then I can flip the board over and start working in from the other side. And it's the same process to remove the rest of the waste. And then I can start chopping out the waste on the other drawer side. With the cleanup on the drawer sides complete, I can now transfer my layout to my drawer front. And just like I did with the dovetail on the table, I drilled out the waste of the drill press and then I started cleaning it up at the bench with chisels. Once I have the majority of the waste chopped out, I can then pair along the sides to establish the width of the pin socket. Once I have the sides paired back to my knife line, I can then work on the back of the pin socket chopping down from the end grain. And now all that's left is to clean up those inside corners. I'll do that by paring in from the sides and then chopping down along the back. I'll keep doing that until all the material in the corner is removed. You'll see a little eighth inch chisel really helps you get right into that corner. Next I can start working on the drawer backs. I cut these pins first, so I'll lay out the pins first on the drawer back, and then I can start sawing them out.
Once I define the sides of the pins with the dovetail saw, I'll come back with the coping saw and saw out the waste between the pins. After I clean up the pins, I can transfer my layout to my drawer sides. That's really simple when you're doing a drawer like this, and this is why I like to do pins first, is you can stick that drawer back in between the two sides, and you have a little, basically a little clamping jig to hold that drawer back in place while you transfer the lines. Now before I begin sawing the drawer sides, I'll just transfer my layout lines across the end grain, and then I can start sawing the tails. and the coping saw helps to remove the waste. And then also saw off this little piece with the handsaw. Once that joint is fit, I can work on the drawer bottom. I'm doing that real quick with a hand plane, just beveling three sides so they slide into the groove uh, in the drawer itself. This first attempt here is a little thick on the left side, so I'll hit that again with the hand plane just to thin it up a little bit more and try to fit again. It's in frame mat, don't worry. <laughs> so that's still a little tight, so I'll go back to the hand plane a little more just to remove a little bit more material and then try it again. And that's the fit I'm going for, nice and snug. Now the next thing I'll do is install my drawer stops. These are just some scrap pieces of wood that are thin enough to slide under the drawer bottom that I'm just uh, using some CA glue to glue into the case. I also sanded down the finish to get to bare wood before I glued these in. With the drawer stops in place, I can slide the drawer in until it stops, and then I can transfer the curved front of the table to the drawer. At the bandsaw, I'll cut out the curve on the drawer front. And then I use my sander to sand that drawer flush to the opening. I also noticed that the drawer fronts weren't looking that great after being sanded, so I also went over those with my card scraper. And now I can attach the top. I'm using my dividers again to get the top in exactly the same position as it was when I scribed it. And I can transfer the layout holes from my screws. Now here's the scariest part of the whole project. <laughs> drilling into the top. Make sure you're drilling into the underside and make sure you're not drilling all the way through. Let's see, I actually stopped to double check to make sure my stop gives me plenty of room before it actually goes through the table. And using one of these little offset screwdriver thingies, I'll install the screws and attach the top to the table. So that's it. There's the table. I hope you guys liked the build series. I hope you guys liked the project and the table. Uh, I thought it turned out really nice and I'm really happy with the results. So as always, thanks for watching. I greatly appreciate your support. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about in this video or any of my other videos, please leave me a comment. I always appreciate those and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking.